Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be making a paper bag skirt. So this is actually really special and I'm going to be sewing this on my grandmother's old sewing machine. And actually the fabric that you saw just before is also a fabric that belonged to her. So this whole project is just really special to me and I hope you enjoy it. So I am starting out by making a pattern. So I'm just measuring how long I want it to be roughly by placing Izzy on the paper itself and then measuring how long this is so I can take it across the full length. So in this case I decided to go with 30 centimeters long so just if you have a full length roller nice and easy. And then as for the top bit I do end up changing this a little bit later but you'll, you'll see. For now I did decide to go with two and a half centimeters. So I'm just going to go along the full length um, and I'm choosing the full length because I want a lot of gathers. I mean, it's a paper bag skirt, so we need the gathers. So this is what we're looking like. The little top bit gets folded down and then this is what I have. So I wanted it to be long. I mean, that was the whole idea for this skirt. So nice and long. So as you can see here, I did just uh, change my mind. I folded it down a little bit more because we do need a paper bag look. So where the elastic goes is lower than where the top is. So that is why I decided to do it this way. Uh, I am just remeasuring that again. So you can copy this if you like. And that new total is five centimeters. I mean, you could just read that, but I'm saying it anyway. So this is the sewing machine. So we had it completely surfaced, so it works. I don't know how to use it. We'll figure that out. So I am actually really excited. This is such a beautiful sewing machine. And my granddad actually painted this base black. So it just means so much to me, this whole video, like the whole process. It was so nice, especially since my granddad is no longer around. This just gives me like a little touch knowing that he did this. And then my grandma was so kind be, to be giving this to me when she heard that I was looking for an old sewing machine. I had just mentioned it randomly. And there's even a little note that she had written for directions and things. Not that I actually consulted this note when I was trying to figure out how to work the machine. I forgot about that actually. So yeah, there's a few bobbins in that uh, case there as well as needles. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer up now. So that is the random as bobbin. Like, it is so random. If you take a look at the normal one, it is so different now. I don't know how to wind a bobbin yet. I haven't figured that out. But I still have a few bobbins that are on there, so we're gonna keep that. I'm pretty sure that little, that little thing that I just touched is to help with winding a bobbin. We'll figure that out some other day. So if I move these little clips there, there's one on the front, no there's not, just on the back, I can open this up. So this gives a lot of storage space. It's empty at the moment, except for that little thing. I don't know what that little thing is. I mean, if you have any ideas, feel free to comment down below. I love knowing new stuff. But anyway, this is what the inside looks like. There's even that little cushion on the side that is a pin cushion. And then from the top view, this is what we've got. It is amazing and it's heavy. I mean, it is really heavy. I need two hands to touch, like to grab it. So along with this project, she also gave me a box full of thread. Full, like this whole box is hers. So she gave this to me. There's some beautiful thread in there and I chose one and I went for it. I just had a look. This seems logical to me. And then I couldn't get it to work, so I tried it again. And I got YouTube with there. Not really. 
So after that disappointment, I tried again, and again, and again. But we eventually got there. And I'm very happy, and I haven't undone it yet, so I do know how to do it. But we'll get to the sewing now, because I'm done with the sewing machine threading. That was a lot of work. So, taking the pattern, it was just really a large rectangle. You can just wing it if you want, just get the length. Anyway, I am just folding that in half, pitting down the side and sewing this. So, this is why it's really beginner friendly, nothing to it. And now that we have this sewing, it is actually time to fold over the top. So this seam that we just sewed is actually going to be our back seam. So I am just folding over how far it needs to be. The crease that was already in there was from the fabric. I didn't iron it beforehand, which kind of made it a little bit harder to actually get it to fold in the right spot. But with enough pins and uh, once you've sewn it, it's okay. I mean, you can iron it. Go for it, iron it. I usually do that when the iron is out and it wasn't now anyway so I have measured all the way around and I've gone ahead with the five centimeters I'm just going to top stitch this in place basically oh I did fall over a little bit on the bottom there just to have a nice clean edge or you can overlock it anyway I am just going in and sewing this I'm trying to keep the stitching really nice and even. Uh, I'm just lining up the edge of the foot with the fabric edge to try and keep it straight because I do want the right side to actually be as nice looking as possible. So there's a tip, just keep it lined up with a sewing foot. I do that half the time anyway. So once I was happy, I did leave a little gap in the center back. Keeping that in mind, leave a gap. That is where this the elastic is gonna go into. Anyway, I'm just gonna cut off some extra threads and now I've got the elastic which I'm measuring around Izzy to make sure the correct length that I need. And once I'm happy, I just cut that off. I did make sure that I could stretch this elastic over hips as that allowed for Izzy to put on and off. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a piece of chalk and measuring the channel that I need for the elastic. So the elastic that I'm using is actually very narrow, so I don't need as wide of a channel, but the way that I'm doing this with the chalk is to make it easier to keep it nice and even all the way around. Also, you want to give it a little bit more room compared to the elastic width, as you do need room to thread it through. And yes, I did have to re-thread that, which is always fun. Anyway, I'm just gonna finish sewing that all the way around I've also gone ahead and sewed the hem, which is just a simple double fold over and trying to keep that as neat as possible. So hemming this is easier to do before doing the elastic, just a little side note. So for the elastic I am using two paper, uh, not paper clips, two safety pins. So I can thread it through and then once I've reached where I'm scared to lose the other end, I can actually pin it in place at the start. There's another tip, just pin the elastic to the fabric so you can't lose it. But hey, otherwise you have two ends anyway, so you can thread it back out. So I just sewed that in place, and now I'm just going to do the test before I close the gap. And this actually sits really well, because I did allow the room to go over her hips, it has a little bit of extra room in the waist, but it's up to you, because it is really hard to get on and off without a good closure. So I decided to leave it as it is and to close it up because it's a really tight elastic I do need to close that little gap up which I'm doing by hand 
just the easier way to do that. And once that's fully closed up, we are actually done with the skirt. You just get to turn it inside out, try it on your doll and see what it looks like. And it is actually such a cute look, this paper bag skirt. Like it would look really good with just a simple t-shirt or like in my design you can do it with a tie front top, which will be coming to my channel shortly by the way if you wanted to know that one. So subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified for the Danny Chu tie front top. Okay, back to topic. So this is what we are looking like. I did make a few photos, especially with the sewing machine because oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. I love the skirt, even just with like her uh, crop top, just like it is now. It is so cute. But I do have something that I want to add on and that is a little bow. But you can always leave it as it is. Anyway, if you do want to add a removable bow, so I'm designing this as a belt, I just took a strip of fabric that is 6 centimeters wide or a little bit more, but I would just say 6 centimeters. And then for the length, I did measure this and for me it was 26 centimeters. And this just gives me enough room to go all the way around and a little bit of overlapping for the snap button. And then I have a shorter piece that is 11 and a half centimeters by around six and a half centimeters. And this is for the actual bow part. Oh, the long piece is also six and a half centimeters in width, by the way. So I'm just lining both of those pieces up. Um, well, apparently I've got three pieces. So I am really sorry, but apparently I didn't actually film any if much of making the bow. But I do show you here how to do it slightly. Um, I actually don't recommend having that third piece on top. Just sew it in like a tube, like the big piece. Sew that in a tube and then flip it inside out. As for the bow here, you are going to sew this in a tube as well. Um, hem the sides so you actually have a nice finish. And then we're pinching the center together. This is what mine ended up looking like. I'm really sorry that I didn't actually show you how to make the bow. But I do have a whole tutorial on how I make a bow for the school uniform. So yeah, if you do want to take inspiration from that, feel free to do that. Uh, I did partner this with the tie front top, although it actually doesn't really show you that nicely what it looks like with the skirt since it is a bit overwhelming and it's a really high waisted skirt. So probably just a normal t-shirt would look a bit nicer. But this is what the skirt is looking like. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun learning how to use the really old sewing machine. And it's really difficult since one hand has to be cranking it the whole time. So it was a fun experience anyway. I hope you liked this. Give this video a like down below. Comment on any questions you have or ideas you'd like to see in the future. Bye!